So MJF did come out in Buffalo wearing the Josh Allen jersey. And complete baby face act. Sucking up to the fans. Hugging Taz. Flipping off Excalibur. Posing with the fans. It says last time these fans saw him in AEW, he said some offensive things. But he was only kidding. He loves AEW. He'll never leave this place. AEW. AEW. I called you all stupid marks, but I didn't mean it. Because without you, there's no MJF. It says there's going to be a tournament of champions, but he's going to work smarter, not harder. He has the poker chip that guarantees him a title shot. He only has to beat one guy. He's going to be in this tournament where he has to beat two or three. It says we need leadership. There was once a wise Jewish man whose name started with M who split the sea wide open and walked his people to the promised land. I'm not here to tell you that I'm Moses, but I'm better than Moses. Everyone cheered this. Uh, Moxley came out, says MJF is full of crap, and MJF basically said, you're right. <laughs> he put up no defense. He turned on the fans. They're grotesque lord asses. They have a terrible football team and a terrible quarterback, which looks really silly now 24 hours later, but that's okay. Uh, Barry is Moxley for losing. He says, this bargaining chip, this world title, they're just going to start off the bidding war of 2024. I'll take that title to a real wrestling company with real fans and real wrestlers like Cody Rhodes, even a real con like Nick. To quote the greatest wrestler of all time and my hero, the game, it's what's best for business. Moxley eventually threatens him. You can fight or leave. And MJF, of course, teases a fight and then walks out as he's leaving. Mox the ads, your theme music sucks, by the way. And so it's Mox's turn to cut a promo. And he cut the baby facest, baby face promo you ever heard in your whole damn life. He's pissed off. He's embarrassed that he's not there without, or he's, that he is there without the world championship. Not the belt itself. The belt is just metal and leather. You can buy one of those if you want. But it's what that title represents. The passion of... These fans, the passion of the guys and girls in the back, the passions of the fans here in this building, the passion of the fans at home, the heroes we had during the pandemic when we needed heroes, the dream we all have when we started this thing, taking the dark, ugly side of this business and letting it die with another generation, the freedom to be as great as you dare to be, being better than you were the day before, slaying demons, everything he loves about this business, he says. Now, the fact remains that he lost and that is on him. He was supposed to be on vacation until two days ago, but now there's another shot to win with a game of the line. Puts over Jericho, the best of all time. Brian Danielson's a better wrestler than I'll ever be. Darby, Hangman, Sammy, you're all better, younger, and faster than I am. But the thing about Aces is, Aces always want the ball when the game is on the line, and I want the ball. It's time to be a legend. Mox is great if we haven't uh, established this enough this uh, here in 2022. Yeah, I don't even know where to begin here. First off, uh, I guess we have to talk about MJF. So uh, I was thinking about this all day, and some will be disappointed in me, but I'm sorry. Everyone's favorite term, I'm going to let this play out. Okay? Mm. Because yesterday I was like, what the fuck? The, idea, the storyline is that he is trying to win the AEW title so that he can take it to WWE. That's the story. Yeah. And when I first, I was just like, dude, no, this is a bad idea. It's a horrible idea. But, uh, and all these fans, they're, at the end of the day, are the fans into it? Are the, does it actually generate heat among the AEW fans? I will wait and see whether it does or not. This was this was kind of an aberration here because it was his first night back. And he, he was over like crazy. Everybody cheered him like crazy. They booed him like crazy when he turned. I can't really make a, a good determination about whether this is an utter disaster or not. But the thing with the thing is that things have changed, okay? When MJF was doing this like three, four months ago, that fucking place sucked. And it's like, you know... AW was by far the superior television product. And this guy's gimmick was he wanted to go to the other place. And it was easy heat, et cetera, et cetera. Now we're in a situation where Vince is gone and Raw is is doing two million viewers every it's Raw is up and people are watching the show. They're more interested in the show. You can look at the quarter hours, they watch more of the show. And, you know, they're they're not like it's not like the uh, Monday Night Wars, but they're kind of hot right now. Mm-hmm. 
And I don't know about a guy who wants to go to the place that's hot right now. It just It's a different vibe now, and I'm not sure it's a good thing, but I'll see, I'll see how it goes for a little while. But on the surface, I don't know if this is a good idea. Now, the other thing is, granted, uh, I don't know, clearly it was supposed to be CM Punk feuding with MJF, and that's out the window right now. So I don't know what they would have done if none of this would have ever happened, but he came back and it's like, do you remember all the stuff they did all out weekend? And then the promo he did the following Wednesday where he called Tony a fucking mark and he walked out and he left and he went uh, radio silent and he just disappeared for months on end. You remember all that? I do. He just came back. Well, they... And the storyline was he was paid a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> That's it? I waited three fucking months and that was a payoff? He got more money? Where the fuck was Tony for the last three fucking months? <laughs> he was making offers that got higher and higher until finally he got one MGF can not refuse. I guess. It, it seems simple. like it seems like there was so much put into this overall out weekend for the payoff just to be I got more money. Now we're moving on. But he got more money, he still wants to leave. We'll see how this goes. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lose my mind about it. But uh, those two things, it was kind of like I'm not sure about the angle, and I'm not sure about the uh, the payoff after all that. Feels like there should have been a little more. And like I said, maybe there was gonna be more, but you know, Punk's gone. Anyway, this John Moxley is the fucking greatest. Yeah. He uh, man, he gets in that ring, and you know whatever you want to say about the the storyline or the angle or whatever, MGF's delivery is fucking outstanding. This guy is absolutely outstanding at his 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 job of cutting promos, getting cheered, getting heat. But man, John Moxley gets in that ring, dude, and he looks at that guy, and uh, John Moxley has a way of carrying himself where he's the man. Get the fuck out of his way. Yeah. And uh, that's exactly what the MJF character did, by the way. Yeah. It's like this guy said, "Get the fuck out of here. You're a gimmick." And he was like. I'm a fucking gimmick. I'm out of here. <laughs> and he left. And that was it. But, man, this fucking guy is... Uh, I mean, listen, we all know it's coming. Set two-time inductee into the Hall of Awesome, John fucking Moxley. He, uh, I'm inducting him for the second time. At I'm least. not even allowing you a vote. It's at least the second <laughs> well, time. For the record, I also want to vote him in. Yeah, but, I mean... It, Even if my votes are relevant. said no, it doesn't matter. Fine. At the end of the day, it's supposed to be like us, but really, it's just me. I see. I'm putting this fucker in. Third time, apparently. Third time. You know what? One more time, I think he ties Dick Murdoch. Mm. For the most times, a man has been inducted into the Hall of Awesome. That, that wouldn't break my heart. But uh, he deserves it for this promo. He deserves it for this summer. He deserves it for that whole fucking storyline that he did leading it all out. He is the greatest. Which, by the way, should tell you what a fair man I am. Because he fucking buried me at that uh, yeah. GCW show. As you noted, as you have noted before, what you see with John Moxley is what you get. It is. He it is. He, he spoke his mind. He did. He, I respected that. He, he shared his and honest And you know opinion. what? Was, he was right. I did look like a fucking little kid in my Halloween costume. Well, you're not that big. But he deserves to go to the Hall of Awesome. I thought this was a, a great segment overall. And uh, I'm going to let this, this MJF thing play out. Because this mentioning... You know, putting over Cody and Hunter's his idol, and you know, I I still can't figure out what the hell's Tony Khan thinking because like, what's the end game? Well, here's the thing. Okay, there was a time where if I were MJF, if I were MJF a year ago, I'm not sure about this whole WWE thing mm -hmm. because he is a great, he is a fantastic promo, but he is not six two. No, he doesn't look like Batista. No. And you just never know with Vince, okay? But with Hunter in charge, if I'm MJF, strongly, <laughs> I will consider going there. It's a great idea. They offer me $2 million, I'm out of there. Yeah. Unless Tony offers me two or three or whatever. So before it was like, okay, this is a fun storyline with a guy that, why would he go there? Now all of a sudden it's like, there's probably going to be an absolute legit, unless Tony secretly signed him through like 2028. Mm -hmm. But if his deal is actually up in 2024, there will be a bidding war. Then I'm looking at Tony like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? You're promoting, you're literally promoting for two years what will be a real bidding war that you very well could lose. Yes. So I don't know, dude. This is uh, this is some 4D chess here. By I don't even know by who. 
there's a long way to go. And I would like to think they have sat down and considered all possible outcomes and how they will handle that. Maybe I'll give them too much credit. Um, but the, I'll, I will give them the benefit of the doubt. I'll say that. I'll put it that way. And yes, uh, John Moxley is unbelievable. And you know he, he brought it up here. And he, not, not, not to put himself over, but to put the company over about how they offered heroes during the pandemic when we needed heroes. But the fact is, he was the champion. He was the hero during that time, having great shows and great matches week after week in an empty uh, 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 amphitheater. And he's having a better summer this year. Oh, by far. That's astonishing. By far. This is, greatest, this is his greatest year of his life. Oh, yeah. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.